Todd Schneider. Welcome to Water Tech with Todd. This episode, we're going to be going over basic installation of an eye wash and drenching hose system, an ASSE 1071 mixing valve, uh, and then the piping and how to get to this point. Now, one thing I want to recommend before you jump into installing any of these devices is you want to be aware of all the rules that are out there. Uh, and the best thing to do to get the rules of how to install and where to install this is look into our ANSI standard Z358.1-2014. Uh, this is going to give you all your basic rules, uh, where you're allowed to place it, some of your hot water requirements and your pressure uh, requirements on that as well. The other thing you want to do is check with your local code because sometimes in your area it may be slightly different that your local code will be expecting a higher standard than just that ASPE standard. Now the first thing you want to do when you're installing one of these devices is you want to choose your location. That location, you're going to want that in a very open area. You don't want a bunch of devices or anything that's going to obstruct anybody from getting to this and using it. Uh, some of the other requirements is make sure that you're a minimum six inches away from any wall or a minimum six inches away from any obstruction that's going to stop somebody from coming up and using this device. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the installation of our ASSE uh, 1071 uh, blending valve. What this valve is doing is we're taking our extremely cold water and we're taking our extremely hot water, bringing them together and blending them to send it to our eye wash station between 60 and 100 degrees, okay? One thing you're gonna notice is I don't have any ball valves in this line, and you don't wanna have those in the line just to make sure that somebody can't come over and turn those off, uh, kind of deeming this unusable, okay? Uh, it does have service check valves right here uh, that if you need to shut these off and maybe maintain or rebuild the valve, uh, these are gonna be the only valves that you're gonna wanna have in the system. Now, the other thing you're going to notice is that I have another half inch line coming up. Now, I want to let you know right away that this is not always necessary uh, and not always needed, uh, but I installed it because I just wanted to show everybody out there that if you have this in a system where you don't have a sufficient amount of hot water flowing to your blending valve, uh, you may want to add a return line. We're going to add that return line off of our hot it's going to come up and then through a circulation valve back to our heater. And what this is going to do is giving you that ability to keep a solid, continuous flow of hot water and keeping your temperatures um, at this device at extremely hot, extremely cold, uh, and then able to jump in and blend it down to the required 60 to 100 degrees uh, to your eye wash station. Now, if you're looking at setting this, one thing you're going to want to notice is that this is a little bit different. We have an Allen wrench screw, but this is gonna be a vandal proof, okay? This will come with your device. You'll insert it into the stem itself, get in a sufficient amount of water running through this, and you're going to turn this Allen wrench key in eighth inch or quarter turn intervals counterclockwise to make it warmer and clockwise to make it colder. But you're gonna to wanna to stay in that 60 to 100 degree range. Now one thing you're going to notice is that uh, my ASSE 1071 blending valve is labeled right, is located right here. Uh, again, this is not going to be a mandatory. Uh, this can be lower to the floor. It can be higher up in the ceiling. It can actually be located under the sink. Uh, I like to install mine in a very visible location, uh, so you're able to come in here, uh, do your preventative maintenance and rebuilding. Uh, it's my personal, I don't like them too low to the ground because they kind of get beat up with things kind of rolling around, smashing into it. Uh, and I don't like it to be too, too high, just for the mere fact uh, that once a year when you're getting in here, you're maintaining and rebuilding this valve, uh, it's kind of tougher when you're up on that ladder. So any area that you'd like to install this, just make sure you get it installed as close to the eyewash station as possible. All right, now that you got your system completely set up, uh, you got your eye wash and drenching hose, you got your 1071 mixing valve, uh, you've got your water blended to the correct temperatures, uh, the last thing you want to do is make sure that you label this station with a highly visible sign. All right, now that everything's connected, uh, we're going to want to run this through a test, okay? We're going to want to make sure that we're getting a 0.4 gallons a minute uh, out of this device at 30 PSI minimum, and then also make sure that we're getting a 
range between 60 and 100 degrees uh, coming through that hose. And what we'll be doing is just run that into a basic bucket, uh, testing your temperatures, uh, and then also testing your pressure. One thing you're going to notice is that this has a locking mechanism on the handle. So once you hit it once, uh, you're gonna, it's going to give you that flow in less than one second and then also stay on. Now again, this is a complete basic installation. Every installation out there is going to be slightly different. Uh, but make sure that you always check with that ANSI standard Z358.1-2014 and also look into any local code requirements that may exceed that ANSI standard. I appreciate you watching today, and if you have any questions or comments, please put those in the link below. Also, like and subscribe so I can continue to keep doing these videos. Thank you, everyone.